All right, so we're gonna show a video showing how to set up the IDOD completely. Um, I've got some videos that show cutting and everything, but wanna show you what to do from when you receive it. So when you receive it, there's a bolt right here that just holds it in. Uh, so holds against the pressure here so that it doesn't move all around in shipping. Once you get it out of the box, take that bolt out. You don't need it. And then uh, we always send them with a case in there and it's already cut showing you and it's had a desired thickness, but let's say that's not what you want to start doing. So we need to take it apart and redo it, start from scratch. So I'm just gonna take this machine and purposely throw it out of kilter. And I'm gonna take the, uh, the adjustment boring bar, which is the outside one. I'm just gonna, you know, you can see it's not set up with any sort of thickness. Okay, so you're gonna need to put the call it tool in. There's three three notches don't just barely put it in like that and then start cranking on it because what happens is you're gonna bend these tabs you need to be all the way in and just like that till it doesn't go anymore then take your call it wrench come back here okay hold pressure here while you do it and then bump that up Take that out, spin it off about two rounds. It doesn't matter how much, it just needs to be off. Take this back out, so you can see it's still tight. Take your hammer that we give you, we call it a whack-em bar. Hold your hand on this side so it doesn't come flying out and hit your cutters, and then just hit that. It will release that collet. Then, make sure you have no chips, fresh, shavings or anything left in here because that will mess with your concentricity i'm just going to put the same one back in uh doesn't really matter if you grabbed another one the process is all the same so come here put it in to where that's basically flush there's no doesn't have to be perfect, could stick out a little, could stick in a little, there's no exact depth. Put your collet tool back in, all the way seated in, and then take your nut back here. And you'll tighten that up. And you'll feel it crushing in on that taper. Okay, so now that's tight. Let's say you've just put in a new one, a new case holder for a new cartridge. So now, this is a 284. This is 65284 Lapua brass. It's already been expanded for seven millimeter. It's brand new brass. Uh, make sure your case holder is clean inside. Just take the swab, solve it a couple times. Put the case in talk real quick about case fitment if you get your case holders from us which most of you guys are the body shoulder junction should be basically flush with the end of the case holder or slightly past and the reason for that is the more the case hangs out of the case holder you're gonna get any sort of run out that you have in your case body to neck is gonna be projected so if you're holding it here, let's say you've got a thou run out, which will clean up fine. But if that's hanging out right here, you may have two to three and it won't clean up. So you want, that's a perfect fitment right there. How you can also test to make sure your fit is good is put the case in backwards and it should stick, go in about the same amount that it hangs out. So you can see there where my fingernail is, that's as far as it goes in. That's telling you that the taper is contacting here on the shoulder to body and it's it's holding it here what you don't want to have happen is you have a case that's got more taper than the case holder which can happen varies per brand of brass peterson is different than lapua and different than alpha and so on and so forth and 
when you put a case in a case holder, when you have it in your hand, you can actually slip it in and wiggle the back. There should be no movement in the back of the case to the case holder. And the same thing in the front. And then when you're all done, make sure it doesn't go in, you know, a half inch or whatever. And then you know that it's not contacting if it goes in that far. Okay, so, so you've got your case, your new case in there. You've got your new case holder. You're tightened all up. So now we need to set the cutters. And I'm going to take this forward stop also, and I'm going to skew that. So nothing is set up. You can see here the inside cutter is nowhere near touching the inside of the neck yet. So you can see it's not set up at all. So this uh, thickness, I'll just measure another piece I have here. Thickness of this brass, you see this is 14.6. That's what the 65284 brass is when you expand it. So let's uh, say most everybody's going to a thickness of 12.5. So we'll start the machine, try to get the light as best possible. We'll come here, you can see we're nowhere even near close yet. So what we're gonna do, you can see it's being out here a little bit. You can see me cranking this handle. And I've got a sticker here. To cut more on the inside, move counterclockwise. So you can see that's the way we're moving because we want to get that cutter to cut on the inside. So you can see right there, I cranked it enough or I'm barely starting to touch. It's kind of just there on the end. So I'm going to go another half a thousand. You hear that, you can see I'm cutting full the way around. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna leave the indicator wherever it is. So there's this just a reference, and you've got, you can loosen this up and throw this wherever you want. So if you wanna throw it at that point, that's fine. So now our outside cutter needs to be set. There's multiple ways you can do this. If you don't wanna sacrifice one piece of brass, um, what I would do probably is just turn it off. I would come up to right there and then let's bring this outside cutter. What we think is going to be close. Turn it back on. I'm going to just cut the whole inside. Okay. So right there, we fully cut the inside. Obviously we're not touching anything on the outside. So you can whip this all loose. You need to make sure you're holding pressure. Hold this back out for you. Back and away from you, kind of like at a diagonal. There's not a, a retractor in here. So if you push that same direction, your every time you do an adjustment, it's a constant. So I will bring that back in. I'm going to push pressure that direction. That's pretty close. Push pressure back here. Just tighten just one screw. And let's see what it does here. I'm bringing that in. I can see we're still not cutting. Loosen up. I'm going to crank in here on the dial. You know, seven lines is basically a foul. So I'm just going to go roughly seven lines. Tighten it up again. At this point, I'm going to tighten the rear screw also. See, I'm still not cutting. Just barely starting on the outside. I mean, just a hint. It looks like it is. We're going another foul. You can see there we're starting to cut here. So one thing to take note of is we've cut that inside about six or seven times now. So that reading of the thickness we're gonna get once we make this cut is not gonna be the same as the normal operation because we have tool pressure, tool deflection, and any sort of machine. So it's gonna measure thinner now than what it will on a real case. So we've got we're snugged up. You can see we're just kissing that outside. 
right here. Not even really cleaning all the way up. So we're gonna stop it, and then we're just gonna, depending on what mic you have, sometimes you can get in there and you can measure without ever pulling the case out. Let's see, you get over here, get a little more clearance. You see right there, like what, 14? So. Our goal is 12.5, right? So at this point, this is what I would do. I would say, I wanna cut on the inside so I get a good fresh cut, and I wanna cut on the outside. I realize I'm about a thou and a half oversize. So what I'm gonna do is where I've zeroed my indicator, I wanna take out of a thou and a half, let's take half of that out of the inside, half of that on the outside, roughly. So I'm gonna bring this, or the inside cutter, it cuts about seven tenths. So if I make a cut now, it's only gonna cut on the inside because my outside cutter has now moved away from the outside of the neck. But we wanna make it thinner. We wanna go a thou and a half. So if we look here, seven tenths is basically a thou. So there's seven tenths. And then we wanna go a half, which is basically another three thou here, or three lines, it's one, two, three. Now this won't be necessarily exact exact because you have some clearance in the sliding mechanism here, but it should be fairly close. So to reiterate, we were a thou and a half from target, but I wanted to cut, make a fresh cut on the inside and on the outside. So what I did was move the whole carriage or cross slide seven tenths towards me. So that's gonna cut on the inside and then move the outside cutter a thousandths and a half in. So it should cut the same uh, thickness off of both sides. Um, so let's try it and see. You see we're cutting the inside there and we're cutting the outside. Okay. So now, let's take and measure that while it's in there. Now this will be a fairly accurate cut because we cut the inside and the outside so we don't have to worry about the tool pressure of us dragging so much in and out in the beginning. There may be some more deflection because you're gonna be cutting more material when you just do it in one pass. So we're just gonna be cautious of that. All right, let's see if we can get this mic in here and get an accurate measurement here. I would, I would definitely finalize measure this outside, but rather than pulling the case in and out. So you can see we're at like what, 12.8. So we went a thou and a half, we were at what, 14.1. So we're pretty close to what we did. We want about three more tenths, right? So if you look at our chart, three tenths is two lines on this micrometer here. So loosen up, okay. Remember, pushing at a force vector of a diagonal back and away from you, we're gonna go one, two lines. You notice I have never touched the center cutter. You pretty much should never have to touch it um, unless you've damaged it or, or something. That cutter should stay where it is throughout all of your cases. Another thing you need to make note of here. See how this outside cutter, go focus here. See how this outside cutting tip, right? So that's the cutting tip, is behind the cutting tip of the inside cutter. That's so that you fully cut out that donut and that inside cutter is all the way inside the, the case and done with its cut by the time the outside cutter gets up to the shoulder. So, go here Let's see if we can check it here barely can get there so you can see it's like 12 4 so we're pretty close we're close enough to where I would take this case out and let's put in a fresh case to see what it's gonna do in normal operation. Because you have full pressures and deflections. Let me 
gentlemen, you can see the finish here. This is actually a customer's machine we're uh, just testing. It's not our personal machine, but you can see good cleanup. So you can see here in the full, it's a little thin, right? So it's like 12, 2, 12, 1. A little thinner than I would want. I mean, you can see the. So we're going to just back this off. A smidge. Pretty close where we want to be, right? Maybe just a pinch smaller than you want. I mean, it's definitely well within tolerance, in my opinion. But let's just back this up just a, just a smidge more. I would also get in the habit of tightening the screws in the same pattern. So if you tighten the first one or the front one first, then the back one or back one versa, I would probably recommend starting with this one because um, that does most of the control work. And then you tighten this one first, this one second. So I'm just pulling brass out of our expanded box. So you can see here, I wanna make note of this. You see how that case didn't go in as far as the rest? The reason for that is there's contamination or chips inside of this case holder. Sometimes you don't even see it, just a small one. Make sure the outside of your case is clean. You can see there, we're coming back out. So. Make a cut here. I'm not going to tear all this brass and expand it to the same state. You can see. I'm going to take this brass out. So we expand it all. Kind of a mess on the box here. Okay, so you can see here, turning all up the inside, turning off the outside. Notice how fast I'm feeding. I think this speed rate produces the best finish. Pretty close where we want to be, right? So that piece is gonna expand it. So I wanna I'm I can see visually I'm taking a lot off the outside and not as much off the inside. So to cut more on the inside moves counterclockwise on the indicator. I don't wanna go too much, maybe three to five tenths. And what that does, just so you guys understand, that's moving the cut. The, the cutter width is staying the same. If I move this whole carriage a hundred thousandths, it's still twelve and a half thousandths between those cutters. It's just centering that cut into uh, the neck. I'm gonna go on just a little bit looser, larger gap here. Okay, now, and you can see right there, it's cutting on the inside, cutting on the outside, and you can see it, you know, it's a good, consistent cut. So what I want to point out here, I want to show you guys this. See how, you know, it cut good on the outside, full clean up. You see this little spot right here, it didn't clean up on the inside. So what we'll do, we can move that even closer towards us for counterclockwise and indicator and take a more cut out of the inside. Okay, so you can see we're basically where we want to be. So now let's say you want to change thickness. You say, okay, we've got this other gun. It wants to, uh, let's say we want to go to like 13.2. Or let's say you want you know, more neck tension or however you guys do it. If you're running just a bushing or, you know, you're expanding, whatever it is, you want to go thicker. So let's take this and you can just back this up. 
retighten it back down. It's kind of good to show you what we'll kind of go over what we did already. good on the inside but I can probably still see a little spot see it right there where it didn't quite clean up so before I go any further I could actually take the indicator and move it even more counterclockwise which moves the carriage towards us okay and it will recut that inside again because the outside hasn't touched yet so you can see that outside is just barely touching right so you know that it's gonna be thick. So if we measure, let's measure spots to actually cut because that will tell us the true width. Don't measure a spot it didn't cut because that's not gonna tell you exactly what it is. You're gonna get right there. That's like, I may have to pull this case out to get a real good measurement here. You can see there, we may have took a little bit much off the inside and not enough off the outside. So we'll show you guys again. We're gonna clean it out. Okay. So we'll come back here. We'll move that back. Yeah. And at this time, we could re zero our indicator, so we got a zero reference. Cut here. And let's, let's take this. Crank it in a little bit. Tighten it up. Make a cut. We cranked it in, you can see. I like 12 free. Okay. That's like 12 free all the way around. So, I mean, let's say, okay, let's go back out two times. You know, I'm, normally it wouldn't take like this. I'm kind of showing you guys, if you go too far one way or the other, how to correct it. Um, usually, once you get used to the machine, you can get it set up within a case or two. Uh, it's pretty common. Okay. So you can see there, we're cutting all off the inside. Some of this grass, I gotta apologize for because some of it's expanded with different standards. It's just kind of a conglomeration of brass, but all the concepts are the same. You see there, like 12.7, and I'll leave back to that. So, it depends how finite you guys wanna be. Some guys wanna be, well man, I wanna be right on 12.5. Okay, we're just gonna go in, not even, you know, basically one line be a thou and a half. Another expanded piece of brass. Probably the expanded with the same expander. You get all the chips out when you measure too, like had that might be before. 12, 7. Six and a half. 12, 6. I mean, 
you can take the same, another thing we'll talk about, you can take the same piece of brass, and I get customers tell me this, they're like, why well, see three tenths of variation around it? Well, I tell them, mark on the outside of the case what you're getting in like six spots and measure it three times. And most of the time, they can't repeat the measurements. And the reason for that is we're talking a tenth of a thousands here. And if you get anything in there, and when you measure, you need to get all of the clearance out, okay? You get on the apex of those curves and then come down, okay? Take all of the clearance out and you'll wiggle back and forth, back and forth. And you can actually feel it, like go left or right. And like, I'll take this same area, right? I'm gonna mic it three times. So I'm gonna just throw it in there, mic it. You see that? See how it's a different measurement? And I'm gonna do it again. You see that? Like it's tight. You can see it's tight in there. The, the reason for that is I'm not getting the apex of that inside ball onto the apex of the case. So you need to kind of wiggle and find that that thin point and rotate it and wiggle and find that end point. Don't just put it in there and wherever it goes, I mean, look, that says 13.6, right? I mean, I'm hitting the, the ratchet on the thimble. Oh, that's 13.6, 13.4. But, but look at this. I'm gonna put it in to measure it correctly. Get all that clearance out and look what it really is. So there's a measurement technique to this. And it's something that's just gonna come with, with practicing and time. But like I said, I can put this on the same spot of the brass and I can give you all kinds of measurements, right? I mean, I can, so and you can see like that. Oh, guy with, you know, that's tight in there. Guy would think that's 13.1. Well, look, you know, once I find off the apex, it just slips right in and out because that's not really the right thickness. once you find that apex, it repeats. You know, I get guys that tell me that, like, oh, you know, the brass is, it's three tenths variation around. Well, it's it's not, because you can't even repeat your same number. You need to get that technique down. Um, so, you know, this is a, a 35 degree cutter in here, which is right for 284. Um, another thing I'll we'll talk about, this degree that we have on here, that 35 means it's made for a 35 degree shoulder. That cutter is actually at 40 degrees. It's five degrees more than what it says. The reason for that is when you cut into the shoulder, if you had the same exact angle, you would contact this whole part of the shoulder at one time, right? That's not what you want. Most guys, when they cut in the shoulder, they wanna thin this area right here so that as brass fires over time, you don't get that donut inside. So guys say they wanna order you know, more angle than what it is because they're used to, you know, some of our other uh, people's turning tools, which I don't know if they measure them that way, they're the exact angle, but the number we put on there is designed for that shoulder. So that says 35, that's made for a 35 degree shoulder. It's actually 40 degrees so that it will start cutting at the base first and work that cut out depending how far in you go. Um, so, I can cut another case here. I think that, what was that one at? 12, 7, 12, 6, 5. All right, so let's measure it here. Or you can see we're at the same thing, 12, 7, 12, 6, 12, 6, 5. Like I said, make sure you make sure you get all those chips out and make sure you find that apex. Now, once, you, uh, once you find that apex here, you're able to reproduce that same number. So there's some there's some feel to that. So that's the gist of how to set it up, how to set it from scratch. These numbers here on this red dial don't mean anything, ignore them, only go by the indicator. 
another thing to make note of is if you're running hundreds of pieces and you know the machine does have it's going to have some inherent vibrations from from machining from cutting it's possible that this slide can move over time it won't change the thickness of your cut but you may see hey i'm cutting more on the inside than i want or more on the outside than i want so just make sure that stays within zero you know within two or three tenths it's not going to hurt you also uh if it's too loose like it's um over hundreds of cases let's say it's moving you know and you got to keep adjusting it there's these screws on the front that are called gib screws you can loosen up these these nuts right here and then just give like a quarter round or or so crank on these screws and it will actually put pressure on this gib right here this white uh, slider spacer and give more pressure it will be harder to crank the handle but you know you only got to crank the handle once once you get it set that you know it's set it and forget it so you know the movement this way is obviously free moving so i hope that answers questions on setting up oh one thing we didn't talk about yet is the shoulder stop so some guys like using the shoulder stop and that way they cut into the shoulder each time is the same So I want to cut just barely into the color of the So you're going to come here. Let's say that's how far I want to cut in. Turn your machine off, okay? Loosen up this thumb screw. Try to hold this from spinning. It shouldn't really. Bring that shoulder stop up. And you want it to contact the shoulder above where you're going to cut. Obviously, right? So it's consistent. Push that snug that up so that way when you cut into it be the same each time now one thing make note of if you crank on this handle you know you really crank and feed in yeah it's gonna cut more into the shoulder even though you got the shoulder stop there you gotta have this um, uh, equal amount of force each time it's just kind of a reference so come here the shoulder you know same amount as as last time you can see there so one benefit of you know this machine over every other is all the other machines the overall length of the case has to be consistent because you're feeding it on that mandrel and it's just hitting on the end of the case right so then if your overall length varies your cut into your shoulder is going to vary but when you dad them off of the shoulder you can see the cut is very consistent so, uh, you can see like this brass is expanded, right? But it's not fired, so the shoulder is kind of uh, concave, I guess you could say, where it's not straight. So I would try to dad them up here towards, uh, more towards the body, because that's probably gonna be more consistent than in the middle, until it's fired. If it's fired brass, you can dad them anywhere you want. Because then it's all, it's all consistent at that point, right? So, see, same cutting to the shoulder. See your rudder. I'll take this. And that apex. So, and you know, once you find a spot, you know, with the mic, you could, you know, there's there's a technique to 
how much you ratchet down. You know, I could like crank the crap out of this and you can see it's like way tight, right? I mean, it's, it's locked on there. That's obviously not an accurate measurement. So try to keep the same feel, the same click, you know what I mean? Like do the same thing each time and you'll get you know, like, to really find that, find that. So that should answer most of, of the questions um, you guys have. Uh, setting it up starting from scratch if you were to change shoulder angles all you got to do take this screw out right here this in this micrometer will slide out the back loosen the two top screws slide this cutter out slide your new shoulder angle in and just do the same process we did on, on setting it up <clears throat> it goes a lot faster when you're not trying to make a video so uh, <clears throat> usually we can do a caliber change and, and set to the thickness in less than you know eight ten minutes so all right, hopefully that answers your guys' questions.